put a pillow on my lap because you know what I'm like to get comfy. Comfy, yeah, lovely. You okay? A little bit. Is it hair or is it from Yeah, I think it is. What do you think? From your hot pass gone. Okay, right. Well done. Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're just joining me now yeah, then, I've eyes. got something else on my eyes. Yeah. So I rushed to do my makeup. A tiny bit of black on the eyelid. That's okay. Yeah. Thank you though, baby. Yeah, I'll sort it out. Thank you though. Got to What's my hair saying? I'm real. Very smooth. Is it? Yeah, it's, it's nice. because you, blow you brushed it last night for me, didn't you? No, it's very nice. Um, nice thank sure. you. So, just wanted to come on here really quickly. I don't think it's going to be that quick, but wanted to give you a bit of an update as to why we were actually off social media for a while yeah. and why we've been struggling for the last six, about six weeks. Been going on, hasn't it? Yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. So about six weeks have been going on for. Um, I was very sort of elusive and didn't really... Um, is that even a word? I didn't Delvin. really, yeah, I didn't really want to go into it at the time because I was really still struggling with it. It was quite and raw. It was really raw. Mm -hmm. um, and now we're on the other side of it, almost. Yes. Um, we thought that we'd just open up to you guys and be completely honest. So a lot of you knew that I was struggling with um, my uncle being, um, my uncle having cancer and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was constantly going to hospice and stuff, but then, um, Spencer's just going to jump in if I struggle with certain bits or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we're just to morally support each other. Yeah. Um, so Renalia was struggling with being ill on and off like three weeks. Um, and we don't know whether it was COVID. We don't know what it was. We will never actually know what it was. Yeah. Um, but it was like, she picked up bug after bug after bug from being around lots of other children. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's normal for them to just pick up things. Yeah. Um, and at this time, she'd been walking since she was about 11 months, 11 and a half months old, mm -hmm. but she never just got up and walked out of the, like, let's say we were along the seafront, she'd never just walk. She'd either yeah. want to be carried, um, or she'd do a couple of steps and yeah. then be like, nah, I'm going to sack it off. Yeah. Um, and she'd walk around the house and then she'd crawl mm -hmm. and she'd walk, crawl, walk, crawl, walk, crawl. So we were like, that was just Renalia and she'd learnt the skill and she was just doing it and children just do things whenever they want, don't they? Yeah. So we just thought that was, you know, fine. And it was. Mm -hmm. And then um, after she'd been struggling with being unwell, when we mean unwell, we just mean like cough. She never had a temperature really. She was no. hot. Yeah. But a temperature for Renalia because she's a colder baby like me mm -hmm. isn't as high. Yeah. So like the highest she's probably ever had is like... 37. 37.9. Yeah. And that's oh. high for an alien. Like, she's not very well. Mm -hmm. um, like, she had that. Yeah, anyway. So, she had her um, sicknesses and she sort of just had lots of cold. Um, we took her to the doctors twice. And both times at the doctors, they literally told us that in her ears were fine. So, we thought she might yeah. have had, like, a middle ear infection. Chest was clear. Chest was clear. Yeah. Um, she sat there so subdued subdued and we should have really cottoned on then that that wasn't really Renalia because sure. if we ever take her somewhere normally if a doctor tries to put something in her mouth she does what normally you know babies do and she screams and yeah, goes yeah. crazy but that should have been a telltale sign and the yeah. doctor was very like you don't even need to give her a cow pole even if she's got a temperature like she is fine yeah and I was like I'm just trying to tell you doctor like this isn't what she's like at home so on the back of her illness mm. she had stopped walking so although Obviously, the doctors have said, yeah, it's all good. Um, she had stopped walking. She barely wanted to crawl. Um, but so, yeah, I mean, that, I was like being a typical dad and I was just like, oh, she's, maybe she's just like on the mend, mm -hmm. trying to get like, you know, get a bit of strength back mm -hmm. and then she'll get better. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I'll let you carry on now. Yeah, so basically a week before this, she'd kind of been in the bath and my mum was looking after her. And my mum was like, oh, she's struggling to sort of put her neck back. My mum over worries about everything mm -hmm. um, differently to me. My mum is way more... We call her the risk assessor. We call her the risk assessor. So I was like, no, she's fine, mum. She's just not feeling very well. She was struggling with her teeth. Her teeth were coming through. We were like that. Yeah. So then we went down to the beach. My brothers were here. My dad was here. You were here. And we just mm -hmm. went to the beach. And I was like, guys, look. And I put her up on her feet. And she was like this. Yeah like this and I was like guys this isn't normal mm -hmm. and I started crying and they were like Mills chill out calm down which mm -hmm. let's be honest we'd never heard of this we'd never no. even knew anything of this so understandably they were like Mills chill out and yeah. she's just not feeling very well and she's weak mm -hmm. they were like something's attacked her she's weak it's fine and then we got home and I was like my older brother was here and we were trying to get her to crawl like just to get something and absolutely nothing. We yeah. gave her some Nurofen because she was really struggling pulling out her ears and she had really red cheeks. Yeah. And the Nurofen, which we will explain later, gave us about 
20 minutes of a tiny bit of Renalia being her normal self. Yes. Um, so she got up a bit, she tried to climb up her, her soft play, we brought the soft play into the lounge, and I just knew something was up. Yeah. And, you know, we then kept trying, and she'd cry if we put her on her feet. And when I meant she couldn't crawl, she'd sit up and she wouldn't be able to get over her, over her hips to crawl. So she wasn't crawling. And we know that she is normally a very attached baby. Yeah, we yeah. do know that. And yeah. a lot of you guys know that she is very attached to my hip and our hip, um, more so now. Yeah. And she just wants to be carried a lot of places, whatever. Mm -hmm. So we kind of thought it was a bit normal, but then we also knew something wasn't right because then the Sunday morning, so it's been going on sort of Friday, Saturday, yeah. Sunday morning, oh, no, Saturday had, night, yes, you went, Mills, she's going boss side. Yeah. I went, really? So then me and my older brother like held a toy and we were like, no, it's only because the her toy was closer to her, her eyes. That's what we thought. We just thought it was there. So her eye went a bit in. Yeah. Then in the morning on the Sunday, we woke up, we put her in her high chair to eat and her eye was completely in. Yeah. So her eye was completely turned in and for, Outside. yeah, for a week, it didn't come, for about five days, it didn't come back out. No. No. So, um, that's scary for any parent. Obviously, lots of things could have just been the case. She could have a, um, they did say it's called something. They could basically, she could have a lazy eye that was going in and they could help oh, her yeah, yeah. get it out mm -hmm. um, by wearing patches and stuff like that. But for me, it was off the back of this, not walking this. So then Spencer was like, we need to go to hospital. Yeah. So we drove straight up to um, the A&E, yeah. um, the children's A&E, and it was really quite quiet. So we were like, oh my God, it's amazing. We got there at like seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And then they numbed her little finger, her hands, and they were like, this is just in case we need to take bloods, um, by the nurse that assessed her. And then we went into the other room and the doctor came in and looked at her and was like, this isn't right. Mm. Um, we're going to get some bloods done. He left the room. Um, and then when the nurse came back to do her bloods, the nurse was like, you do know, by the way, you're going upstairs to be admitted. Yeah, I mean... And we were like... It's just... It was way, I mean, you, you sort of, it was worse than that though, because yeah. she had to have the cannula put in. Yeah, so, yeah, but the lady came in and said she was going to be admitted, didn't yeah, but, she? And then they did the bloods. Oh, did they do Remember, the Remember, it was the bloods yeah. lady that came in and went, I'm going to do the bloods, by the way, you do know yeah. you're being admitted. Yeah. And then... Um, it was just horrendous seeing her get the cannula put in. Doing, she was just sat in this bed and this doctor was like tapping all her bones to see if it was all like working moving, and stuff. Yeah. So, reacting. Mm. And then, um, to be fair though, and obviously we'll tell you what it is, but mm. the first doctor had an inkling what it was, and then luckily it sort of all, yeah. they all what they thought it was, it was, mm -hmm. so that, that was a good thing. So then we, um, the lady came in to do the bloods, there was two of them, and they have to wear this massive thing on the head, and basically I had to hold her in my arms and keep her still, and it, that was hard, wasn't it? Yeah, it was so Because, cool. um... It's really hard because she's got like she's quite chubby mm -hmm. it's really hard to find a vein so yeah. so they um, couldn't find one and then they were like they were really good though they those were nurses. good though weren't they they were yeah. like um just to let you know we haven't actually put anything in yet she's crying because she doesn't like being held yeah um but she was like she doesn't she didn't stop crying the whole time like mm -hmm. i i explained this to one of the nurses at one point when they i'll tell you about that but i said she will not stop crying by the way it's, there's no like give with my daughter there's no like okay i'm gonna give up yeah. it's kicking flake wasn't it yeah um so then we waited and Renadia fell asleep straight after that probably from crying for so long mm. and then she fell asleep on me and then we went um up to the hospital yeah so we went upstairs and got put on the ward and um it was just really alien you know i don't i don't wish this on anyone but if anyone has been to the children's hospital and been on the ward it is like rock solid floors um so i was worrying about renalia anyway trying to do anything yeah it's not the most like child friendly place is it, it has to be clean. it's got to be clinical yeah, so we yeah know that. obviously like, yeah so um as much as we understand that obviously it's not ideal yeah. but um and it was just alien to her the crib yeah was like these metal bars yeah we didn't go to like a room we went into like a massive ward so yeah. we were just in this it was just us in the corner and it was just this massive room but we were really lucky yeah we only had one day patient on our ward yeah so she would just come for the day and her and her family was so sweet mm -hmm. um but then oh god it's 
seems like a blur for me. Then the doctor came and spoke to us. It was a Sunday, bearing in mind. So they were like, we can't do anything tonight. Yes. But tomorrow or tonight, we could potentially wake you up because we need to check for anything on her brain. Mm. Um, so we might wake you up, might we? To do an MRI. To do an MRI. Yeah. So then in the morning, no one come. And then in the morning, um, early morning, the doctor came around and said, we're going to be doing um, an MRI today. So mm. she needs to be nil by mouth. Well, with a breastfed baby, as anyone will know, especially when they're around their mum, and I was not leaving her at any point at this time, um, they, they smell you, they want the milk, especially in situations where they know it's alien, um, and also she's not very well. So again, she's trying to just get as much milk as she can. That was the hardest part, wasn't it? The hours it's of just, that morning. This is, it's all so hard. It was all so hard. Just re reliving it is the worst thing, isn't it? I know, but you did amazingly and you're so strong. Well, I didn't do half as much as you. But you're amazing. Aren't you? Mm. You are. You're amazing. Thank you. I love you. So then, yeah. they came in in the morning. chunk of monka. Yeah. I had to go nil by mouth. Yeah. So that was really hard. And then the MRI took ages to come through. Um, and they basically... We didn't want her to be put under for the, the MRI. No. And um, they did um, tell us that it could potentially be a CT. Yeah. But then they were like, we need to do an MRI. And the MRI um, could potentially be that she's sedated. And they were like, no. In the end, they were like, it needs to be under general anaesthetic. they needed her sleep for the whole time. Yeah. Um, and the reason they did do a CT scan is because they thought CT is not as thorough as an MRI. So they didn't want to do a CT and then have to do an MRI. So they thought, right, let's just go straight for an MRI. So, so um, then yeah. um, they were like, oh, it's going to be about an hour, an hour and a half. It's a long procedure. And then we got taken downstairs. And my mum and my dad, to be fair, your family was so supportive as well over the phone, but they are a lot further away. Yeah. But my mum came down for the whole week and yeah. saved Spencer here and really did help. Yeah, and my was dad hard. was bringing us up food. But anyway, um, so my mum was there and then we went downstairs and um, we didn't really have any clue, did we? About what? What was going to happen. No. Nice. I've been under general anaesthetic before. Have you? I uh, can't remember. When you were younger. Yeah. And um, I think when you were younger, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I don't remember it too much, but I do know that it was quite quick that you... So then for me, I think that was the most scarring part of the whole process. Yeah. Spencer was around the front and I was holding her. It's just... I just didn't realise how quick. So they put the general anaesthetic in mm -hmm. and... I thought it was going to be like a slow, slow process, like mm -hmm. it was just slowly drift off. Mm -hmm. But it was a case of when Alia was crying, and then like the crying, next, the she next was, minute she was just completely out cold. Floppy. Like, we should probably say a trigger warning here, but uh, I'll put a trigger warning before. Yeah. That, yeah. Um, I'll put a trigger yeah. warning at the very beginning of the yeah, video. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. So then, Renalia was just literally, like I say, crying, and then she was asleep. And then, and then we then, just. The worst we, part for you is that the doctor, although he was saying this in a nice way, um, the anaesthetist. He, yeah, he said like give her one last kiss. Yeah, and, it was a lady, happened. and she went give her one last kiss, and I thought don't say that to me, but I know what she meant. Yeah, and I couldn't go with it. Yeah, so I'm screaming. Yeah, oh, I hate even thinking back to it. It's really know. painful. We haven't really spoken about it, have we? Like, no, no, no. I'm gonna be honest. Like, we didn't tell it or any of our friends. No. I couldn't speak about it. And it's we the were first just, time I've probably spoken We were it. just both crying our eyes out because mm. oh, it was the worst thing I've ever, ever seen, ever witnessed. Because yeah. it's, your, it's your baby, it's your daughter. Lying there on the bed. Yeah, it's just like, oh, it's just, it's just, it just gives me chills, gives me chills. Like, it's just awful. I'm sorry if anyone's ever been through that. Yeah. I really, really am. Um, so, yeah, then... When they, they went off, didn't we? They went, were like, it's going to be about an hour and a half. And then the lovely man at the end... He was like, it could be longer, but we're driven by what we found. So then I'm thinking, fucking hell. Mm -hmm. So they said an hour. So we were with my mum, really supportive, but I couldn't focus for anything. And then we kept going back up to the ward and they were like, mm. heard it, haven't heard anything, haven't heard anything. And at that point for me, I wish we'd just been communicated a tiny bit too. Like, obviously, I know. Yeah. And we were very understanding, weren't we? We know the NHS is so understaffed, overworked. And all these things. Yeah. And that's but this is just from our perspective. I'm not complaining about anyone, by the way. I'm just saying in my head, yeah. I had no clue what was going on. Yeah, sure. And it ended up being three and a half hours. Mm. And that was a long time. Mm. 
and we weren't told anything so we were so and um, eventually this one really nice nurse was so sweet was it she she was like it's normal i think i was just trying to re and reassure you as i was saying like no news is good news. yeah you were being really strong you were being really strong yeah that light's gone off <laughs> Okay, so that light's gone off, so I don't know what the light's changed to now, but we're just going to go with it. Um, so this lovely nurse was like, I've just cooled down and everything's fine. They're just going to do a little bit longer. And then about half an hour after that, they were like, you can go down. Went down and I thought she'd be really awake. They were like, we called you early as possible so that you could literally, she could see you when she came round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she came round, but she didn't really come round. It was really like, um, kind of like a newborn where they're flinging their head back because they've got no yeah, neck control yeah. mm -hmm. and then yeah, they had she to she was really yeah. like all yeah. over the place wasn't she yeah so, but yeah but the the lady uh anesthetist she was like perfect timing i was literally hoping you would turn up now because she's literally she just about so nice, to wake and she? then she's gonna see you and then mills tried to put her, well mills just started breastfeeding and of course she shouldn't had any food for ages yeah um but because Renalia couldn't really hold herself, Mills, they put Mills on the bed and wheeled yeah. her up back up to the ward, didn't they? Yeah. And then, um, basically, the reason why they did the MRI is, well, I didn't give this any backstory. When they did the blood test, they couldn't find anything. No inflammation markers, no infection markers. They were like, what is this? Mm. So it made them worry and made us worry. Yeah. Yeah. So then... Um, the lady came up really quickly, actually, to be fair, didn't she? She yeah. came up, like, relatively, like, an hour later. Yeah. She was like, oh, I've just seen you. I'm going to go get the results. I'm going to go look at them, through them, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. She was amazing, our doctor. Yeah. She was amazing. Um, and they... I oh, don't know. I'm probably too early to say about that as well. Who who no, she spoke to? It was Dr Snowden. She came in. Yeah, but when she who she was consulting with? What do you mean? she was speaking to no that's too early yeah yeah so then she came in and she went um it's a bit of a blur isn't it and then she came in and she went so they have flat they have you go. they have found infection markers on her brain so basically renalia fought the infection but it was but, inflamed yeah so there was markers on her brain to yeah. basically show that had something had been there yeah so what they'd said was they needed to do a lumbar puncture at the bottom of her spine mm. to be able to drain a bit of fluid to then send it off to the London um, Great Ormond Street so that they could check for what the infection was, whether it was, you know, meningitis or something like yeah. that. And to make sure that there was no more growth, but uh, any bacteria mm -hmm. still growing, mm -hmm. because obviously then that would mean that there's still infection in there. Yeah. So, so yeah. Had to wait. we had to wait three days for that. Yeah, for them to, to see if it was growing. So every day they'd be like, no growth, no growth, no growth. So then... Um, they basically said that it's crossed over into her brain where she's fought these infections one after another or something. Mm -hmm. What's happened is her nervous system has kind of gone into a shutdown, hence the shaking. Mm -hmm. And what I didn't say either was that throughout the four days of the MRI and the lumbar puncture, all these things, Renalia was getting progressively worse. Mm -hmm. um, she couldn't stand on her feet. She was shaking. Let's say she wanted the boob. She'd go like this to yeah. me. Yeah. Like, and it was the scariest thing, watching your child mm. slowly slow down. And they basically said, if you didn't bring her in, she would have got progressively and progressively worse. So they said, this is why the eye's gone. Because basically, well, we'll explain the eye in a bit, actually. Yeah. So they basically said they need to do a lumbar puncture. So the next morning, I had to sedate her because they she wasn't letting anyone near her. Now, yeah. she is a little bit... Well, we'll talk about that, sorry. I'm just going ahead of myself. But we, we knew it was serious because they were consulting the team in London, the neuro yeah. team in London. Yeah. So basically, her body we couldn't fight the infection anymore, so it attacked her nervous system. Mm -hmm. And then that's why when her brain was sending out signals to walk to, to mm -hmm. her eyes, that's why she couldn't do it because... It was firing the wrong signals. Yeah, so the, the nerve fibres were inflamed, so therefore, mm -hmm. as the message was being sent it was sort of like being hit by a wave and then it was and then it would obviously be get to her and, and just it would be a clear message so her body would just couldn't do what it needed to do so it was awful absolutely awful and just every night so i stayed in there with her for a week every single night um they'd have to do obs on her like every two hours and it would just wake her up she'd scream mm. um 
she slept nothing in hospital, which meant I slept nothing. Yeah, um, you were amazing. I obviously if, couldn't stay in hospital. I had, I had um, like visiting hours, yeah. so I just went up in the morning and left in the, when I could. Yeah, but you were amazing. Like you made all the dinners and stuff, and he was just being my support because I I tried to leave Renee. I will speak about that. But so sedated her. She then went all funny in my arms and then went to sleep. And they basically then had to go into the sterile room. Then they called me like 10 minutes later. They were like, she's woken up. Like, you need to come back. That was hell. Mm. Had to do it again. She wouldn't go back off. That was just absolute hell. Won't go into it too much because I will just absolutely break down. So then um, went off, blah, blah. And then basically in the evenings, I said, oh, if you try and get her blood pressure, you'll never, no one managed to get a blood pressure from her up there because it's really hard with babies. And I said, it wakes her up, the noise, you getting on it. I was like, can we just try not to do it? Because no one's managed to get a thing. Yeah. So this lady came in, she was such a sweet nurse. She was so sweet. And I said, I'll leave you. Um, this was like 10 o'clock at night. I was like, I'll leave you. And you can um, do your thing with her because she'll wake up. And then if she sees me when she's waking up, she just wants, you know, to get out of the crib. Yeah. So then I left her and just waited around the other side of the thing. And basically... They were really, okay, anyway, held, Renee would pull against the lady for her to put the, um, can you know? can, uh, for her to put the, at this point she was on steroids. Yeah. At this point she was on steroids. So she'd got steroids and she'd got antibiotics via IV. Yeah. And they were a very strong dose of an anti-inflammatory steroid. And basically, and we couldn't do anything, there was nothing in their alternative. It had to be steroids. It had to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, at the time I was thinking, like, is there any other option? But there wasn't. Yeah. So then when the lady put it in, Renee is pulling against her. She pulled it out. So she ended up pulling out the whole cannula. And that actually happened to us two times in 14 hours. Mm -hmm. The two nurses um, actually um, accidentally pulled out Renee's cannulas. And basically what happens is you then have to numb their hands and everywhere for an hour yeah. um so this is at like 10 o'clock at night so i said to spencer and i said to the team i need to get spencer up here because i i haven't slept for four nights at this point i've not slept i'm knackered he needs to come up here. he yeah, needs to yeah, help yeah. me i need him to do the night for the moment yeah um and it's traumatic the bloods it's traumatic um so then because like every time she's gonna have the cannula renalia has the cannula put in she knows what's happening she's and crazy. she's we have to pin her down so it's <laughs> It's, it's such, it's traumatic, yeah. it really was, like, and the fact that she knew that was going to hurt her because she's going to have a needle in her skin. Any time any nurse came near her, she'd scream. Yeah. Any time. Yeah, she knew what was going on, she, she? knew. Any time they'd even come in to just do her obs, she'd just scream. Mm, yeah. So then Spencer came up and he did that shift, he did that shift, and I went and slept in the sofa room, yeah. uh, which was absolutely freezing, this leather sofa, but I was there, and then I came back yeah. in to you guys, didn't I? Mm -hmm. And, um... Uh, the next day, one so of just quickly, I touch in. So obviously, we've told you now that she's on steroids and yeah. she's having IV. So basically, when we were at home, when she was having Nurofen, yes, basically, it's Nurofen is anti inflammatory, so therefore, when she had it, that the nerve fibers were inflamed, so therefore, the uh, Nurofen would like take, the, take the edge off it exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's why we were getting these little. But that's just her being good and stuff, yeah. like um, being her normal self. Yeah. So um, that that made sense once they've administered like the stuff in the hospital. Mm. We're like, oh god, poor girl. She was mm. struggling so much that mm. whenever she had Nurofen, that was when she was like, okay, I feel a bit more myself now. Mm. So. And then one of my lovely subscribers was actually the nurse, and this day was a really difficult day. So they'd sent us down to the eye hospital. Um, bearing in mind they told me that we cannot physically take Renalia out for a walk she cannot have any fresh air these steroids have suppressed her immune system so much and yeah. her immune system is so low that she is so susceptible to anything but then you're also in hospital with loads of other sick children that they're having to play in the same area together a play area it was just oh, constant anxiety wasn't yeah, it yeah 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 um, was yeah but within like two days of the steroids, Renalia was already like standing up, yeah, crawling. Yeah, she's reacting really well. Yeah, she? yeah, she was, and they were like so impressed, but they were like, it will take a long time. Mm -hmm. So then um, we'd gone down to the eye hospital, and we'd got there for eight. They were like, your appointment's at eight. Got down to the eye hospital, and yeah. this is just, it was just really stressful this day. Yeah. Um, the steroids and the antibiotics were making her, we didn't know. Yeah. This was the first day of antibiotics and steroids, uh -huh. and she was 
having like nine poos a day and we didn't know yeah. that was going to happen so we ran down there because we were told it would literally be 10 minutes yeah we ran down there she pooed all up the back mm -hmm. um and then we got told that like well we got basically just put in the queue for a and e and we're like what we can't like we're supposed to be like like it's in and out of here because she's not supposed to be around anyone yeah. that and then we got told the consultants didn't even start till nine anyway. So we were like, what yeah. is going on? Like, so it took eventually two and a half hours for us to be seen because yeah. they didn't have an appointment. Yeah. They called up to the inpatients. They were like, it should have been on there, but it wasn't. Someone didn't, yeah. yeah it's just a lack of communication. Yeah. But but the doctor did end up, the doctor who was our consultant mm -hmm. was like, I'm so sorry about that. Like yeah. that was on us and yeah. she was so nice. And But anyway, when we got up there, it's two and a half hours. Renee then had to, Spencer then had to run back because he was going to go and get all of the um, wipes nice. and the nappies. But then obviously, lo and behold, that's the time we got seen. Yeah. And we went in and I was holding Renalia and her two bears. And this man has to wear this big thing on his eyes to look into her eyes. She's screaming. She's absolutely screaming. Yeah. But luckily, they said everything's fine. Um, they were just going to continue to check her and they will continue to check her. But they're basically saying that you know this about the eyes. You're yeah. Going, so what was it? The... The so nerve. basically you've got, I think you've got three nerves in your eye yeah. and the outside nerve, I think it's the optic nerve, mm -hmm. so basically whenever her eye would track to go that way, um, it, the, the signal to basically say come back out to go back the other way, it wasn't working, mm -hmm. obviously again the fibres were inflamed. Mm -hmm. And that's why her eye was going in and make it looking fast. So about two or three days after the steroids it came out. Yeah. It came back out. Um, it hadn't been out for five days minimum. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, so then we'd gone up and I said to the girl who was my subscriber, I was like, that was so stressful. Um, it was really hard. I had to then get navigate back up from the eye hospital to the children's hospital in Brighton. You have to walk up such a steep hill. Renee is on steroids. She's about nearly 11 kg. She's weighty. Yeah. Um, I didn't have any help with Spencer. So it was just a bit stressful. So I was a bit stressed. Yeah. So then that day I said to Spencer, it was my mum's birthday and Hugo had come down. I was like, I'm just going to go for a coffee with my mum. Um, I'd not left Renalia at all, not at all. Mm -hmm. um, but I said to Spencer, basically for her steroids, she has to sit still for about 40 minutes for it to go through the cannula yeah. and the IV. So you have to be in the crib with her watching something. And I said, oh, I'm just going to pop out with my mum, you know, and Spencer was like, you need to, you know, yeah. you need to, because you were, go I was yeah. going a bit too lally in there. You need some fresh air, you know, just yeah. to get out of change yeah. the scenery because yeah. you're just stuck in the hospital yeah and like, i was going a bit del 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 delirious wasn't yeah. i was just a bit depressed i felt yeah. low yeah yeah so yeah. i was so worried i was around it 24 7 i wasn't getting any sleep mm -hmm. um so i just needed some breaks so i went away within 10 minutes i think you went messaged me and was like come back it's happened again so yeah. my poor subscriber bless her she accidentally again ripped out one alias cannula so this was two times in 14 hours and it was just so stressful again. It yeah, was so stressful. Was so Spencer worse. reacted by saying like, I'm so pissed off. Yeah. Because that's a normal reaction for a parent. Obviously Spencer didn't swear at my subscriber or anything like that. He wouldn't yeah, dare. No, no. But I was but, just, it's just, it, it's so like, yeah. your daughter's, it's the worst thing. You know she hates it and. You know what you're going to have to go through. Yeah, it's about three exactly. hours of the process. She's got numbing cream and I was like, oh my God. Like, then some, they, just, they can't find the vein, yeah. so they have to go into another one. It's about three hours from start to finish of screaming. It was just pure frustration. Mm -hmm. I was just like, oh my yeah. God, no. Mm -hmm. like, it's just, it, it was a tough time, mm -hmm. like, you know. And, that's, uh, and he wouldn't hurt a fly, so no. anyway. So then we apologised straight away to the yeah, lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, yeah. Because he was like, what the hell? Like, what's going on? And I went in there and I was like, oh my goodness, how is this happening? And I cried and I spoke to the nurse in charge. I was like, how has this happened two times in 14 hours? I can't believe it. I'm just, I was crying because I was like, I know that it's just a fault and it's an accident and accidents yeah. happen. But as a parent when it's your child, that's your focus. Yeah. That's your focus. Anyway, we spoke to the, get, the girl. She was so sweet, the subscriber. We apologised. We were like, so sorry. It's just so, such a stressful situation. Mm -hmm. She was like, no, I understand. Like, I'm sorry for doing that, you know. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Like, And it was all fine. It was amazing and fine. And mm -hmm. then, she, yeah, we were just talking about YouTube. She was asking me loads of questions. We were just having a chat, weren't we? Yeah. Um, so then she had to have in a sterile room again. And then they couldn't find the vein. And it was so stressful. We were screaming. It was horrible because now, yeah. she was just pushing us crying her eyes out like hyperventilating so she was like because they literally tried to get in so many like feet they'd got in every hands, place and then we were like don't put enough please can we not put enough foot because it's going to fall out because when she's moving moving and stuff so we're like we 
if it's going to go anywhere, I think it went back in her hand. Yeah, it? and then they found a really good vein and they couldn't get any blood out of it. Yeah. Um, but then anyway, yeah. it seems like a blur and we're over that now. Yeah. And yeah, we're very grateful for the NHS. We really are. Yeah, we are yeah. But we're also, as much as you're allowed to be grateful, you're also allowed to be frustrated at certain periods. Yeah. I think that's with anything. Yeah. You know, you can love your manager for work, but if they piss you off and they upset you, you're yeah. allowed to just go... We're human, ah. aren't we? We've got emotions, yeah. so... You yeah, know. and we did say that to our consultant. We were like, the way we've reacted is our emotions and the fact that we were upset. I mean, we weren't like swearing and effing and jeffing. That's not who we are. We're yeah. not people that would do that. Mm -hmm. um, but she said, I understand. I said, we empathise with you guys because... We know yeah, that so these things. Yeah, so understaffed. Yeah. So stretched. Like yeah. They don't even get a lunch break. They're doing yeah. eleven-hour days. Yeah. You know, and and so. Yeah. That's, there'd be some things that we were like, oh, you know. We like can't. the eye hospital situation, the lack of communication. Yeah. We understood that it's because of that, but even though we were frustrated and we were an yeah. angry, because we were like, oh. Like, God. Why make their day any harder? Because yes, yeah, so we didn't want to complain at all. Under already. No. So. But actually, the consultant did say to me, if there is anything here, that you. Are not happy with please complain because yeah. it helps us we are so understaffed we need the top people to help us she yeah. actually said that to us but, but i think basically by uh patients or parents of page patients complaining mm -hmm. it's going to get the attention of people in the nhs to get them support yeah. if no one complains then nothing's going to yeah. change so. she's like my nurses haven't had a break yeah. all day because i can't give them a break because i'm they're so overworked and i've got no staff she was like we take agency staff but we don't have any and it just made you feel so sorry yeah. and awful for them and they were like please please help us that's what yeah. they were actually saying and yeah, it was yeah. weird because it was like yeah. i would never want to complain about the nhs i love them yeah but anyway but, you know, with anything. Anyway, so, where were we then? Long story short, um, there was, like, the last day, it was the seventh day, they were like, oh, um, it had been her seven days of steroids, and they'd seen yeah. improvements in her, but they were like, she's not really going to improve in here because, you know, she needs to be around her home environment and her home things. Yeah, they did some observing in hospital, yeah. but... When Manalia knew mm. she was being watched, like, she was like she's not a performing monkey, no. so she's not gonna be like okay. Mm. But and for the last two nights, we did get moved to our own room. Yes, which was really nice. nice. It was nice, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, but I we were, on the last day, I knew there was, was, a, pos was really? a possibility that we could go home, mm -hmm. where I could get the girls home. So I really pushed for it. I was like, come on, we can get out of here. And um, luckily, they sort of said to me that. We could do these steroids from home, which we have been doing for the last month. Mm -hmm. Which has been fun and games because because she was on such a high dose. She had to be weaned off. We had to be weaned off. Couldn't she be like right? She's better. Mm -hmm. So that's been the last month. But um, they were like, okay, yeah. Like, I think it was like six o'clock in the evening. They were like, um, yeah, you can go. And I was like, thank you. And then we came home, and the minute we came home, we daily did like eight steps. Yeah. And we were like. And they basically said to us it would take weeks or months to sort of for her to relearn the skill. Yeah. So if you've seen any videos on my Instagram of where she's been walking and stuff and it's been like me like going over the top, it's because it has been so scary, her not being yeah. very well. I came back one night when she'd gone to sleep, she went to sleep at seven o'clock and Spencer stayed in the room with her and I came back with my mum to shower because I hadn't showered in days. Um, and I came back to shower and I just... It was horrible coming back. I wish I hadn't come back yeah. because I came Triggered. back. Yeah, and it just I was in a I was in a bad place because I was yeah. looking at all my clothes in my wardrobe like mm. I just wanted to fucking burn it because I was like I don't give a shit about any of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. All I want is my baby back here. Yeah, all yeah. I wanted was my baby to be okay. Materialistic stuff matters. It doesn't matter. All you care about is their health. Yeah. Oh, you were amazing for it though. We were You're so amazing. strong so together. So strong, in hospital. Like, but we were so strong together, weren't we? We yeah. were a team. Yeah, we were Brought good. us so much closer. Yeah. Because because through all of it, we were just like... And my mum was our rock as well. She was good. She was. Very good. She was there with us all day, all night. Mm. Um, she'd be here with you. You two would have your time to, you know... And yeah. then you could be more supportive to me because you were more rested. Yeah, sure, yeah. No, it was, it was... And then my dad was making dinners to bring up, so it was, you know... So our total time in the hospital was about a week. Yeah. Um, and then basically they said to us, like... On leaving, we obviously have to go up to London, which is in January. We have to go up to London for another checkup for them to just continue to monitor her. She's gone to the eye hospital already again, so that was positive. Yeah. We've got another checkup in the Brighton Hospital soon, and they basically said for the next month she's not really allowed to go 
to any nursery, any soft play, any indoor area with any other children. Yeah. Um, and if you do go outside and take her to the parks, you, she has to be anti-vaxxed. And yeah. that's not because, well, they have to be really overprotective with her because of the fact that her immune system is so low. Getting the steroids in her was really fun, not. And then she had to have Meprazole, obviously, to, check, to, to protect her stomach lining yeah. um, because the steroids. But the last month, I would say, has been so hard because it's been a complete change in our child. Yeah. Um, where she was quite highly strong before, and I, I take oh, ownership yeah. for that because that might be my genes more well, so. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm yeah. being a little bit argumentative at times. <laughs> but she, they said it would be like having a teenager with a rage. Yeah. So they call it roid rage, and it has been. Well, that's your chicken. Go on, boy. Um, they basically said it was going to be difficult, and we didn't really understand how difficult it actually would be. Um, she's been. Aggie on another level and it's not her fault um, you know they said to us try and get her outside for some fresh air it was impossible but it was we would do it um, but it was so hard because I was getting all these toys because I was like I need her to be entertained here but she was being she was just bored and she was like so we take her to the park but getting her in her overall to go to the park was a nightmare and it was like, she just screamed. She was just so angry with, yeah, because yeah. the steroids were so strong in her and she was still having them orally that it was just, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. But. We thought of a process, put it in her, your yeah. got it in, like managed yeah. to get it. Because that was a hard thing. We were like, yeah. how are we actually going to get this in her? Because mm. she hates medicine, especially yeah. even now after hospital. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, I was just having so much pressure on me probably because that's what I am like as a person. I was like, yeah. I need to help her like she's not seeing other kids she needs to be entertained and like mm. I was just getting stressed with it wasn't I yeah. um and we've had so much support and I have only just recently opened up to my friends about it because it's just too much I just sent the same message to them all like a same recorded voice note yeah. because I just broke down didn't I and you've been so much stronger than me through no we've been different strengths but yeah. you've been um my rock 100% but also, we just process things differently, and I think now you're processing it a bit more because we've spoken about yeah, it. Yeah, so, more. like, in the moment, like, like, we spoke about this, like, mm. I think Mills feels every emotion all the time. Like, if someone, one of you guys told her a story that was sad now, she would feel that so mm. deeply, mm. whereas me, I would process it, and then I think if I speak about it like I've, we've spoke about it on this video, yeah, um, it, it hits me again. I, I told my, I met up with a friend a couple of weeks after mm. Renee came out of hospital, I told him and his wife, and for me, the emotion, I could just feel it coming through me. I guess when I speak about things, I could feel it more than if I just keep it inside. So, yeah. but you've been amazing. You were soaking in hospital, you were amazing. You were there for Renalia. Mm. I can't think of a better person to be Renalia. Mm. I'm the same for the You, only you. Um, so yes, we're out and off the steroids now. We yeah. still have to keep her. Um, she's not allowed to indoor areas, really. She can go to like garden centres because they're really airy. Um, I found some places that she can go to like a big church. They had a kids thing because it's so cold in there and there's really high ceilings and you anti back her. But yeah. you know, we're there's just, we're just, just being careful, aren't we? Yeah, until we get the all clear from everyone in in January. Yeah. Um, like I booked so many classes for her to go to, so many different things, but obviously everything had to be pushed back to January and that's fine. Yeah. Um, and all that we care about is her getting better. So sleep's got a little bit better. She was waking up all night for the yeah. last like three weeks. I feel yeah. like I had a newborn again, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah, more like that. And then um, it was just draining because I was trying to work and trying to film videos, but then also I was needing to go see Ray in the mm. hospice yeah. um, and that's an hour away. So it was just, it's been a tiring month. I've been absolutely nothing. Like but saying, so have you. It was half you in the spec that obviously Mills is working online. So although she is feeling quite down, there is moments where she can be feeling good as well. Mm. It's just going to, and obviously it's hard to get that balance, but obviously it's good with videos because you get the highs and the lows and yeah. that's what life's all about it's about highs and lows yeah. but i just wasn't ready to talk about it was i at all? no i wasn't you've been amazing though talking yeah. about it yeah so have you how'd you feel i'm a bit relieved yeah Do weight you? off your shoulders but then i would never have spoken about it until we were off the steroids yeah true really but you know we're gonna have the check in london on in january and we'll just keep going with it and she's amazing she's running everywhere now yeah. <laughs> like literally running yeah yeah little scurries waddle yeah um 
and we feel like she's getting back to her normal self, if not even more. Mm, yeah. Um, and last night she slept till six in the morning, which we can't believe because that hasn't happened for yeah. like six weeks. So, but anyway, yeah, it's just been hard because I've been so torn because I've needed to go see Ray in the hospice. I could see him when I was in hospital, and he was so worried about Renalia, wasn't mm. he? Yeah, yeah. So, but I did get to see him loads, didn't I? Yeah. Because I'd go in the evenings. Exactly. So when Renalia would go to sleep, I'd go in the evenings. Even if the traffic was a bit shitty. Yeah, you know, we'd get stuck in like two hour traffic because it was, yeah, Rush hour. and it was just hard to get over across Worthing. Worth it though. Yeah, done that. it was so worth it, mm. so worth it. And he was just praying for an alien. Yeah, he was. And I just think he was off strength as well, wasn't he? Yeah. So, that's that. It's been a hard, but I know hard. people, yeah. Hard bump. Yeah, anyway. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Don't have to, so. But thank you for being so supportive yeah, and thank I hope, you for being I hope so kind. it in the best way possible for you and obviously I hope mm. it wasn't too triggering for yeah. people as well. But um, yeah, this this is our life so we share it all with you. So yeah. um, this is like one of the low parts of it but yeah. you know there's loads of highs so it's life isn't it? Shun but she's so brave. Sunshine and rainbows. Yeah, there? she's our inspiration. Yeah. She is. Like she's she was my strength through the whole, you and, you and her yeah. were my strength through the whole Ray thing because I was like, she's so brave. Mm, you're amazing. You should be so proud of yourself. I love you so much. I love you, girl. Okay, I'm going to end it there. Yeah. Because I want to be in this moment. I want to count to cuddle. <laughs>